Hi, I'm Nessie, and today we're going to go over your Chromebook settings. So if you need to learn how to change your wallpaper, turn your Wi-Fi on, Bluetooth, things like that, then stay tuned. Okay, let's take a look at your new Chromebook. So here's your beautiful desktop. At the bottom, you're gonna see a bar um, with some apps. Some of them will be defaulted uh, pinned. That just means that when they're pinned, that means they show up there, but you can change that. If you come over to the left, you're gonna see this little circle. It's called the launcher. If you click on that, it's gonna open a little bit. Um, you can type into the search bar here. This will find things on your computer and also on Google. And uh, if you press on this arrow here, it's going to open up to show you the entire menu. This list down here is your recently used apps. So I'm going to click on the arrow. It's going to show me all of my apps, everything that I've downloaded. This is mostly the stuff that comes with it. If you click on the right hand side here on these dots, the, they're like different pages. So if you see, if I click on the bottom one, it's going to show me another page of apps. So you can kind of toggle back and forth between all your apps. And from here, you can open up anything you like. So for example, if I want to open up Chrome, I can double click here and it'll open Chrome for me. I can also pin things to the menu like I told you. So for example, let's say that I want my files pinned to the menu. I can tap with two fingers on the mouse. That's going to be like a left click. You can also press Alt and do a regular click, and that is that will show you your left click menu. So you can pin to shelf. That's going to pin it down at the bottom. I like to have my files there. And you can close this by clicking on the launcher again. Another really important part is on the right here. You're going to see your time, your battery level, whether your Wi-Fi is on or not. And also, this number indicates whether you have a notification. If you click on that, you'll see your notifications off the top if you have any. The one thing you'll notice is that there's a little arrow at the top right. When you click on this, it's going to collapse it and just make the screen a little bit smaller. So you can always expand it and make it smaller as well. You'll see your picture. You'll see the sign out button to sort of uh, sign out just the user. It'll keep the computer on. And then here's your power button, so you can shut down the computer. Here's your lock. That'll just lock the screen. So it won't exactly sign you out, but you'll have to put your password to open it up again. And here are your settings. When you go into this settings gear, it's going to have a lot of detailed settings. In the meantime, you have some quick access to some of your settings here as well. So we'll go over those and then go into the more detailed settings. So down at the bottom, you'll see your battery amount. I'm at 53% and I've got 44 minutes until it's charged up all the way. Also tells me the date and the time. Here are my slider settings for my audio and my screen. So I can make it a little bit brighter if I like or darker. My sound. Here's the nightlight. If you click on it, it basically makes it a little bit dimmer and a little bit more yellow. So that's something you can use at night so that your uh, blue light from your computer screen doesn't keep you up at night. I'm going to turn that off for right now. Here are your notifications. So you can uh, turn them on or off here. This is actually all your notifications are on for all apps. I like to turn them off because they kind of drive me crazy. So if you click on that, it turns on the do not disturb. If you want to be a little more specific about which apps are allowed to contact you, you can click into this. So this top button here is basically your on or off switch for all your notifications. However, if you want to get some notifications but not all, you can check which apps have permission to notify you and which don't. So I could basically like click off the ones I don't want to contact me. Like I said, I like to keep everything on don't disturb. And then you can press the back button. Here are your options for accessibility. If you click into that, you can turn things on or off. So you can see I have my large mouse cursor activated. I can click on that and turn it off. Click on it and turn it back on. You come out of there, 
Then you can also see your Bluetooth. You can turn your Bluetooth on and off right here. All right now it's searching for devices. And you can turn it back off. I tend to leave it off when I'm not using it so it doesn't use battery because it'll just sort of keep scanning. And then you have your Wi-Fi here as well, which you can turn on and off as well. So here's off and here's on. Now it's going to look for it. And you can click into here to see some options. So it'll show you all the different Wi-Fi networks as well. These are sort of like shortcuts to some of your settings. If you want to go and look at all your settings and all the details, and you want to click on this little gear icon right here. So I'm going to click on that now. And we're not going to go through every single setting, but I'm going to show you some of the important ones. So here's your Wi-Fi again, as I said. So if you want to connect to a different Wi-Fi and it's not showing up, you can click on this little arrow right here. And it'll show you all of the Wi-Fi's that are in range. So you can always click into one. So if I want to change into this one, I can click on it and put in the password. And connect to that one. So it'll switch me. You can see it says connecting there and connected. So you can always switch up your Wi-Fi there. Here's your Bluetooth again. So if I want to turn this on, I can just turn it on right here. If you want to find a device to connect to it, I would press on this arrow. And right now it says it's not finding any devices. Let me turn on my headphones for you. Okay, so I'm going to turn on my headphones. Oh, I found the TV. It's not my TV. <laughs> okay, so there are my headphones down here. So I turned it on at the same time. And then you can click on that. And it'll ask if you want to, oh, it's already connecting it. So it says connecting and then press OK. And now my headphones are connected via Bluetooth. So it's pretty easy. When you're done pairing, you can come back out again. Those are already paired now, so you can just turn on and off. I'm going to turn it off for now. If you have a phone and it's on your Wi-Fi, it can find it, an Android phone. So you can go into setup. Here's my phone. It knows I have a Galaxy S10. That's because my phone is hooked up to the same Wi-Fi as my computer. And so it knows that it's there. So I'm not going to set it up, but if you want to set up your phone, you can press accept and continue and go through the settings. I'm going to press cancel for now. Here you can manage your users and set up your parental controls as well. So I'm not going to do it now, but if you want to sort of control the screen time or where your kids go, you can go to setup. And that'll lead you through the process as well. So just press get started and follow those instructions. Down here are some other options. Uh, so your touchpad, your keyboard, your displays, your storage management, and your power. So this will give you some settings of how you want to use your keyboard. If you don't really know, then I would just leave it as the default, but you're welcome to come in here and play with it. You, you won't ruin it by playing with this section. Under keyboard, you'll also see ways that you can customize that as well if you want to. For displays, this is pretty helpful because you can change the size of the display. So for example, if this is a little bit hard to read for me, I can make it bigger. So I can just sort of keep clicking on these until I find one that works for me. That's really nice and big. Let's see how big it goes. That's pretty big too. So you can sort of play with this and make it work for you. And here's your night light, so you can turn it on anytime you want. You can see it makes it nice and yellow so it doesn't keep you up with the blue light. You can also change the color of it so you can make it a little bit cooler, which is bluer, or a little bit warmer, which is more orangey. So you can sort of customize that. I'm going to turn that off for right now. The other thing you can do is schedule it. So you can have it never turn on so that you just do it manually when you want it, or you can have it set to do it at a certain time so you can do like sunset to sunrise so in the evening it'll automatically turn on or you can do a custom setting for different times when you're done with that you can come out storage management so as you can see this Chromebook only has about six and a half gigs of storage 
doesn't have a lot, so you definitely want to not save too much to your Chromebook. Your Google account and your Drive will have about 15 gigs for free, so you definitely want to rely on that a lot. But this will sort of tell you what you're using your storage for. And when you're done, you can click back. Okay, and your power settings. So under power, uh, to just tell you what percentage you're at, how much time is left, what to do when you're not using the computer, when it's idle, it's set to go to sleep. You can also have it turn off the display, but stay awake and keep, keep the display on. I like to let it go to sleep. Also, um, this is the default setting is to let it go to sleep when you close the cover. So I like to keep that on, but you can change these settings if you like. To personalize your Chromebook, you can change your image. So right here, you can pick any of these little guys if you want, or you can upload your own picture. If you click on this uh, Take Photo, it'll take a picture with your webcam, or you can add a picture from, from your file. I'm going to leave that one for now. The other thing you can do is change your wallpaper. So if you click here, it's going to open this little app. Here's my picture that I have right now. And you can sort of just scroll through here, see if you like anything. I tend to like really pretty things like this. So you can pick something and just take a look at it see if you like it. I like it. So you can leave that and just press X when you're done picking what you like. And you can reset your wallpaper anytime you like. Then uh, search engine, we're going to leave that defaulted to Google because they're the best, of course. To manage your apps, you can go into here. I just have the default apps right here, but if you wanted to delete anything or uninstall it, um, then you can click on it and click the uninstall tab right here. And then you'll see it'll ask if you want to remove it. So you can remove it. You can always reinstall an app if you need it again. And I wouldn't mess with this Linux thing unless you know what you're doing. So we're going to go into the advanced settings. This is an area you might want to be just a little bit more cautious of. Don't play with it if you don't understand what the settings are. But I will show it to you. So if I click on advanced, this will open it up. So here's the time zone. So usually things are set to update automatically. So hopefully you have the right date and time on your computer. If you don't, you can set it here. Go to choose from list and check where you are. I am in Eastern Daylight Time, so I'm going to leave it right there. But if you have a problem, it doesn't quite sync, it doesn't know where you are, you can come in here and change it. You can turn a 24-hour clock on instead. And here are some options you can turn on and off. Um, so help improve Chrome's features and performance, you can turn that on and off in these other uh, settings as well. Keep Wi-Fi on during sleep. Uh, it's really up to you. I'm going to turn it off. I just feel like it uses battery. If you want to change your language, so maybe you speak something besides English, you can do that here as well. And you can add multiple languages, which is really helpful. I'm going to add Spanish. I'm Colombian, so we'll go with that. And when you're done, just click right back out. Here is, uh, in case you want to disconnect your Google Drive from the computer, again, I don't recommend it, but you can if you want to. Here you can install printers. Here are your accessibility options. So you might want to go in and just take a look because there's actually some stuff that's really helpful in here. So there's text-to-speech, there's display options, including increasing the contrast and adding a magnifier. That can be helpful. some keyboard and text input options, and mouse and touchpad. As I said, I really like the big mouse. You can turn it on or off, and actually you can change the size as well. So you can really kind of customize it. So feel free to go through this and see if there's anything that might be helpful for you. And then click out of it. This last setting here, you want to be really careful with it because it's to power wash. So when you power wash a Chromebook, it's going to reset it to factory settings, which means it'll delete any files that you have saved to the computer itself in your file folder. If it's backed up on the drive, it's fine there. But if it's just on the computer and not on the Google Drive, it will get deleted. It'll also remove any users from the computer. So you definitely only want to do that if you're having a lot of trouble with your Chromebook. Let's say it's really slow or you got a Chromebook from someone else and you want to sort of 
clean it out and make it as close to new as possible. So then you want to go through that. I do have a video on how to power wash your Chromebook, so feel free to watch that if you need the help. Okay, so there you go. That's how to use your Chromebook. If you have any questions, type them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them for you. Enjoy your Chromebook.